Thanks for spending part of your Independence Day with us. We welcome you to another edition of Moral Side of the News. I'm John Blinn with the WHAS Crusade for Children. On this week's program, the Louisville Metro Council fills the seat left empty by the death of George Unseld. And Senate confirmation hearings are underway and continuing for Elena Kagan. We'll discuss these topics and more on this Independence Day with our distinguished panel here on Moral Side of the News. Father John Stoltz, St. Gabriel Catholic Church. Dr. Tom Mobley, Nelson Christian Church. Reverend Sally McLean, Edenside Christian Church. Rabbi Stanley Miles, Temple Shalom. And Dr. John Slider, Breckenridge Chapel, Free Methodist. Like a scene out of the classic Hollywood movie, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, where an unknown Jimmy Stewart becomes a member of Congress, after a five-hour stalemate in backroom negotiations, the Louisville Metro Council elected a political unknown to fill the seat of 6th District Metro Council seat, the one vacated by the death of George Unsell. Let's hear more about this new council member, who he is, and more about him. His name is Deontay Hollowell. Here's Joe Arnold on WHAS 11 News. Well, uh, Dr. Deontay Hollowell, the next occupant of the 6th District Metro Council seat. Is there any kind of a crash course you have to do at this point? I'm getting it right now, actually. On his first full day as a Metro Councilman, Deontay Hollowell picked up on one of his predecessor's causes, the scourge of vacant and neglected properties. Because I do think I agree wholeheartedly with what he wanted to see the 6th District uh, actually look like. What the Metro Council looked like was of paramount concern to the NAACP, who insisted George Unsell's replacement also be African-American. All of the white council Democrats backed Fairness Campaign co-founder Ken Herndon, who was white. African-American attorney Nika Parks Thompson was supported by all but one Republican and all but one of the African-American council members. Now I've heard that this seat has to be occupied by an African-American. I want this seat to be occupied by a person that's going to serve African Americans. So with that being said, I cast my vote for Ken Herndon. With neither Herndon or Parks Thompson able to get the 13 votes, Deontay Hollowell emerged as the late night compromise. Was it important to you, in other words, just to get right to the crux of it, was it important to you that it wasn't African American that would be an advocate? No, no one, when they wanted to compromise, that was the only name they brought to us. I think it's, it's important to the degree that my experiences as an African American have some sort of uniqueness, but I don't think it was a determining factor in people who voted for me. I think people saw my passion for the community and saw my, just my, my spirit as a whole, and people were accepting of that. Joe Arnold, WHAS 11 News. So now we turn to our panel for discussion today. We'll start with uh, Sally McLean. What are your thoughts on this new, young, independent councilman? Well, first of all, I think it's very difficult to fill any position where there has been a lot of respect and a lot of deep feeling for the person that's uh, had that position, and I think that was the case. Um, also, I think that this speaks of the polarization of our country right now. You know, the vote was divided. We couldn't come to a compromise. We had to come to somebody completely new. And perhaps that's a good thing. Perhaps that his background, his education will uh, give him uh, the impetus to do what needs to be done in Louisville. So I see both sides. But it does deeply concern me, the, the polarization of our country. I, I was intrigued by um, uh, two things. One was uh, the uh, interesting coalition that brought uh, this. Uh, I, I felt this felt that this gentleman was a uh, compromise candidate. Um, the other thing that intrigued me was uh, he seems to be a, pretty much of a blank slate. I, I don't have anything against him or for him. He's, he's not. He's not my councilman. I just recently moved, so I've got to figure out who my council, the council person is. Uh, but, um, I, you know, I, I looked uh, on the internet last night when we got the information on this, uh, on this topic and uh, could find very little um, uh, on the gentleman. I know he's got two Facebook uh, uh, sites or pages or whatever they are. Um, what, does, what disturbs me uh, is the... Um, the continuing uh, politics of identity. 
uh, one group wanted one candidate, supported one candidate, I'm talking group, groups that lobby, uh, because uh, the gentleman was like them. Um, the other, another group uh, felt like uh, that uh, there was, an, uh, there was a, um, a right to have certain districts um, designated for one particular race or ethnic group. Uh, I, it, it, that type of politics of identity really disturbs me. I'm happy with it, uh, to be honest with you. I and mean, that's I'm saying that not knowing anything about this gentleman or where he's going to go or any direction like that. But I think it goes to show that it, it works. I mean, there's disagreements. Um, and here in, in Louisville, you've got a group that was pushing for one candidate, a group that was pushing for another within the council. Uh, they couldn't come to agreement, and they did come to agreement. I mean, after quite a few votes, 33 votes or whatever it was. But I, I think that's good that if you can't agree that, yes, I'm going to be happy with this candidate or you cannot be happy with my candidate, then, you know, a compromise did take place. If you're talking about youth, if you're talking about education, if you're talking about race, uh, this was a candidate that seemed to have some qualifications there. I, I'm kind of interested in the fact that he's registered independent, and I'm, I'm interested in what that's going to do in the fall election. And certainly this was a, a, a help to him to get his name known and to get him out there within the community, uh, basically an unknown from, from my perspective. And uh, here he is now. He has a chance to come back and maybe even win as, a, as an independent. It'll be interesting to see that election this fall. So I, I'm very encouraged by the fact that even though they could not agree, finally they said, well, let's come together on this particular candidate. I, I, I wish I knew a little bit more about him. And, uh, and where he was going to go and what direction he's going to go. The thing that did concern me was that, um, again, uh, simply to pull a person in because of the race or you know, had to be, there's, there's no guarantee of that with any kind of merged government that I'm aware of. And yet I think it's certainly the right of people to push for that if they desire to have a candidate of a uh, particular race, but uh, you know, I think the community needs to be aware that there's no guarantee of this uh, with any kind of merger that I remember happening. Stan, I, I'm taken with this this fellow. I, first of all, I think it's a courageous move for anyone to want to come in after the very untimely and tragic death of George Unsell, who was the consummate good soul. Uh, the idea that he isn't independent is intriguing to me, but actions speak louder than words, and the fact that he has taken up uh, the property issues that were so important to, uh, to George Unsold, may his memory be blessed, uh, gives a, a sense of positive continuity. So. Uh, uh, it's it's not business as u usual, and I, I think it bears uh, it bears watching. John, I have a lot of good hope for him. Uh, you know, we talked about how these events illustrate the divide that we have, that not only in our own community but in the country. But also, I mean, what they show is that um, that division doesn't have to stay permanent for everything we do. But but if we are open to a good end of unity, and we work at it that I think that our nation can come to unity on the very important things that we need to do. He is the first registered independent to be elected to Metro Council, or appointed in this case. What about this question of race, though? It was very prevalent in the piece we saw in the NAACP.